Well, welcome to Getting Started with Google Drive and Google Docs. Well, my name is, well, first of all, let me introduce my, my partner in crime here. Um, Hello. Good morning, everybody. Amber Hickman here. Um, uh, this is my dad, in case we were wondering about the, the last name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm currently an educator for LA Unified. I teach social science um, 11th and 12th grade. Um, so I come from a family of educators. You could see them pictured in the upper left-hand corner of our collage here. Um, I love plants and they love me back because they're all staying alive so far. Um, I graduated from Cal State, University, Cal State University Long Beach and I'm currently there studying uh, for my master's in educational technology. So um, also sewing is what I'd like to do in my spare time. My machine's pictured in the upper right-hand corner. Um, I love what I do so far, but I'm pretty new to it, let's be honest. Uh, I started a YouTube channel, uh, just really tracking my experiences as a developing educator. So feel free to check that out. I will shamelessly plug it throughout this session here. And on the far left-hand corner, you'll see a pan, made, a pan handmade Domino's pizza, which I really enjoy deeply, truly, madly, deeply. It, it doesn't really love me back, but I, I, I really enjoy it. So check it out. And when you get the, the links to this slide deck, you'll see that you can click on some of these photos to learn more. All right, thank you, Amber. And um, I am uh, Steve Hickman. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to try to avoid uh, getting a little teary here because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working with my daughter for the first time and uh, it's the family business here. So we are I'm, I'm certainly happy about that. And um, if you notice from my uh, pictures, well, you know what I like to do, right? I, I love uh, being out on the golf course. And, uh, and you know, the reason I love it is because it's a learning challenge. It's a, it's a challenge to actually learn something. And, and as I consider myself a learning scientist, as I continue to learn the game, I'm very cognizant of the steps that it takes to learn a new practice. And so it's, it's a challenge and it just, I mean, so far it's, it's been uh, pretty consuming. So if I'm, if I'm not working, I'm, chances are I'm golfing. So um, um, it's definitely a, a fun thing to do. And, um, you know, I, I'm a graduate. Uh, my doctorate is from uh, Pepperdine University. Of course, I went to UCR as well as um, uh, Cal Poly Pomona. And of course, uh, ardent uh, Laker and Charger fan, and none of these are active links, but uh, you know, that just shows that I'm so proud of my daughter. She's already ahead of me in the game. So, all right. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So why use uh, Google Drive and Google Docs? And here's just a simple uh, rundown of, uh, of some of the advantages, right? Of course, so Google Drive is really your online hard drive, if you will, if you want to think in old school terms for computers. This is where you're going to store uh, and access uh, documents. Um, you can access these documents from any connected device. Um, you can control who these documents are shared with. And you can also prioritize and organize your workspace, which is a, a recent feature with Google Drive that I really like. And Google Drive can store any type of uh, file. Uh, the only difference is uh, Google files uh, don't count towards your storage space, space everything else does. Okay, so uh, Google Drive storage used to be unlimited, but now they've put some, uh, some ceilings on it so that, um, uh, you know, they wanna make a little money off of you. But, um, uh, Google Google Docs, uh, much like uh, you know Microsoft Word, of course, um, uh, it's a it's a living word processor. It really, um, again, accessible from most any device. You can collaborate in real time, uh, and you can and you can see individual contributions from all of all of your learners or students or whomever your or, or peers. And again, you can access that work from anywhere. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, just to kind of take the temperature in the room, I know we have uh, quite a few participants here, uh, but I have to know what you already know. I know we're at varying skill levels when it comes to our knowledge of Google Docs, but I wanna make sure the rest of these tips and these, uh, I guess these tips to implement Google Docs in your classroom are really truly relevant to you. That being said, um, I'm gonna go ahead and launch a KWL chart. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna get the link here in the chat. I can do that. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
And then I am gonna go ahead and open that window up and I'll be able to see because we're on Google Docs when you guys have joined me on this chart. Okay, so I see quite a few anonymous participants coming in and that's because I set up this document so that anyone on the internet with the link can add to and edit this document. So in case you're unsure of what a KWL chart is, it's what do you know, what do you want to know, and what have you learned? We're skipping the L today because we don't have that much time, but tell me one bullet point, what do you already know about Google Docs? And in the other column, what do you want to know? What tip do you want to want demonstrated by the end of this session? So let's take a minute or two, grab a bullet point, and I see you guys typing away. And if you see a cursor already on that line, you, you want to go ahead and uh, go to a different line. So Should be plenty of space for everybody. And if not, we will add more space. The advantages of a living Word doc. Okay, I see some people adding in the chat. Nice. That's fine too, feel free. And if your document is having any trouble loading, just give it a minute. Keep in mind, there's uh, quite a few people trying to access the same document. Google might need a breather. Right. Typically there's a, a 50 person limit to effectively uh, collaborate on Google Docs. So we have a few more than that. So we may experience some, uh, some turbulence along the way, so. All right, so just going off of a few responses, I see. Oh, where did they go? Good question. Talking about Google Drive, um, mm -hmm. how to create slides. Uh, we might not talk about slides specifically, but we can certainly talk about how to start a new presentation of any kind with a Google app. Uh, shortcuts to share. Okay, we'll definitely go over sharing. That is critical. How to create a chart like this. Yes, we will demonstrate that. Locating a dot quickly. Sounds like we have some uh, Google Drive tips we need shared pretty soon. Have an overall understanding of how to maximize its capabilities. How to use it more efficiently. Sharing with others. Organization shortcuts. Okay. All right. So uh, it's good to have a picture of what you want captured in this session. And we're gonna go ahead and touch on as much as we can with the time we have. So um, let's go ahead and switch gears and I'm gonna switch to another doc uh, that will be given to you uh, shortly. I'm pretty sure we can get that link in the chat. And we're gonna go over some of those elements that you guys discuss. Now, if we start off super rudimentary for you. Just keep in mind, we're at varying skill levels. So we're gonna kind of start from the beginning and then fast track to some of those features that can help you maximize your use of docs. Okay, so um, I might wanna share my screen at this point. So I'm go gonna right go ahead. ahead and interrupt your share real quick. Okay. And here we go. Okay, so um, hopefully you're able to see my screen. Any thumbs up, let me know. Yeah, great, thank you. All right, so getting started with Google Docs. So this link in the chat is coming, but before we dive deep into the content of this guiding document, I wanna just walk you through the layout here. Um, how did we even get this document? It has pictures, it has headings, it, it has hyperlinks, it's kind of a lot going on but hopefully it doesn't look overwhelming to you. Um, that's one of the advantages of using a Google Docs template. So that's what I used in order to start this document. Um, if I were to demonstrate it from the beginning, it would look something like me going to file, new, document. And then from there, can I, can I, I can either start a document from scratch or I can use one of these handy dandy templates which I'm a fan of, new Remember? from template. 
Uh, yeah. I, I'm the sign language interpreter. I don't. I need a spotlight on me because all this information is not being seen by the deaf clients. Okay. I need to be spotlighted the whole time. I know you guys switch back and forth with speaking, but they're perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. I'm um, sorry. My apologies. So just to review, uh, to start a new document, we are going to file new document or new from template. I used a lesson planning template and there's plenty of other templates available depending on what you are using your document for. Um, so here you can see there's headings. When I click in my cursor in a certain area, I can see what kind of heading I have here. So I have a title here, heading one here, normal text here. So you're able to tell Google how to view your document, which is great for accessibility as well. Okay. Um, so I also have pictures here, uh, quickly how to insert images, how to insert these interactive elements in your Google Doc. Uh, let's do a quick demonstration. I'm going to copy a link and let's start off with inserting in an image. So you have the option to insert an image from your computer, from the web, uh, from your Google Drive, you name it. So anywhere you have those uh, photos stored. I'm gonna show you how to insert an image. Let's go from my Google Drive, it might be a little faster. So I see these images I have stored in my drive. I'm just gonna click on that. And the beautiful thing is I can do this all within Google Docs. I don't have to go outside if I don't want to. It especially helps to have an organized Google Drive uh, and we'll get to how to do that later. Okay, so that's inserting images. So if I want to insert a table, they make it very easy to insert new elements. So I'm gonna just go to a new line here, insert. And I can tell Google, much like Microsoft Word, how big or small I want my table. From there, you can add your headers and be on your way. Now, keep in mind, this is a crash course. It's going to go fast, but we have uh, these tips recorded. We have this presentation recorded. So we can uh, be able to go back onto this sheet as reference and our slide deck as reference. So any questions in the chat so far? Um, can we access your presentation slides? Yes, you will have these slides. How did we get the avatars? Uh, yeah, I will show you that shortly. And let's see, access to slides. Yes, you got it. So how do you start to type? You're just gonna point and click, okay? So it's much like Microsoft Word, it really is. The only difference uh, is that in my opinion, it's more dynamic, okay? So um, just to go over some of these other elements, first of all, what is a Google Doc? Living word processing document. And we wanna go ahead and highlight some of these features. Some of you ask like, how do I type? How do I start a new document? There's a tutorial here that you might find very helpful. It's very short to the point. It goes over different ways to start a new doc, um, how to share it. It goes over that briefly. Um, but I've also created a tutorial for you because sharing is one of the parts of uh, Google Docs that we as educators tend to get hung up on. So let's do a quick demonstration of sharing because that's probably the most critical thing. All these collaborative features are awesome, but if we don't have the ability to share and wait, I didn't want you to change that. Oh, wait, what, where are you going? With? We want to avoid the confusion with the sharing. All right. So especially with your, when you're sharing with the class, keep in mind, there's multiple ways to share. So if I click the share button here, um, you can, if you're in a small staff meeting, go ahead and type emails directly. If you're working on a small group project, paste their email, you can share uh, your document with people directly. From there, let's say I wanted to share with myself, I can uh, demonstrate, hmm, what kind of access do I want them to have when it comes to this document? So very often we might share documents if we're new to Google Docs and we, we want them to see it, but we didn't want them to change anything. You can monitor that by making your person a viewer. If you just want their feedback, you can make them a commenter. That means they can add comments to your Google Doc without changing your work, without changing your original text. 
And then of course, editor, you trust that person, you work closely together, they have the access to uh, go ahead and adjust your document, add to it, take away. All right, so you would just send them a short message if you like and go from there. So, I mean, the details on how to share, of course, are in this tutorial video. So you wanna make sure you have the link to this document so you can refer back to it in our session. Another way to share, which is how I recommend sharing in a whole class session, is to go to get link. And you can copy the link once you have adjusted your settings. Every Google Doc starts off restricted, but you wanna make it so that anyone with the link, preferably anyone within your organization, can view your document. Once you have adjusted your share settings, go ahead and copy your link. You can share it in the chat. So I wanna make sure we have uh, go ahead, answered some of these questions in the chat. So we have, uh, how do you access, uh, how do you avoid request access, which uh, I think you may have just touched on, so. Yes, and just in case I know it's a lot of steps or it might come off as a lot of steps when we're first getting started, I made a video because it's the number one Hi, issue that we deal with. So please refer back to this video when you're done with this session and we review some of these sharing steps, go over multiple ways to share a document and avoid those access issues. Right. Okay. So, but right. if you make sure it's anyone with a link, when you share a link, that will open it up to anyone. So, so. Yes. All right. So if you're asking, okay. How, what, what happens when you choose commenter? We will definitely go over that. Um, I wanna get to this key note here too. If you're just getting started with docs, uh, make sure you're using the Google Chrome web browser because some features are limited if you choose to use a different web browser with Google apps. So it works best with Google Chrome. Um, I use it, I love it, and it integrates very smoothly with docs. That's how you can get things like the Bitmoji app, things like uh, these other plugins that are listed on this doc. Um, use Google Chrome with Google Apps. So um, some ways I've used Google Docs in the classroom, I can go over this briefly. Once we have a template that we love and that we feel like, okay, this is really useful for my classroom, I highly recommend starting with templates. I steal them from other teachers all the time. Um, this is just some ways that I've used Google Docs in the past, recent past, really. I stole this template from Amanda Sandoval. If anybody uh, follows her on Twitter, she shares pure gold at least once a week, is what it seems like. But while I was in my distance learning classroom, it was helpful for me to have an assignment that allowed my students to introduce um, themselves to each other briefly, quickly, with all of the directions to do so on one page. So feel free to explore this a little bit more, but uh, these templates that, that other teachers share have been extremely helpful in creating an interactive collaborative experience, especially in a distance learning environment, highly recommended. So some other uh, ways for our, our younger students, especially our kindergarten students, our first grade students, we can teach students the skills of Google Docs by having them do a short all about me assignment. Um, even the photo collage that we did on Google Slides that you saw not too long ago, it's a great way to get students um, into learning the tools and features of Google Slides and do Google Docs in kind of a, I guess, a relaxed environment. So these are all templates that are available for you to use, and there's so much more online depending on your subject matter, your topic. Um, here's just a few to get you started depending on what you would like to use Google Docs for. Okay, um, and I've I have many, many links here, but I wanna highlight just a few ways. Um, I think collaborative writing is one that we should really touch on. I haven't used it in a narrative context, but having multiple students on a Google Doc in a small group setting uh, with a specific writing objective has been really helpful in my classroom. Um, my dad probably has more experience with that being a past English teacher and all. Do you wanna to speak to a collaborative writing? Um, you know, I, I just found that uh, in my classroom of uh, 40 kids, having to uh, read 40 papers uh, not only was inefficient for me because I could never turn them around fast enough to really make it so that students actually continue to work and revise. Um, I found that my solution was collaborative writing, and I started this even before 
uh, we got access to the technology, but Google and Office 365 just makes it so much easier because now I have four students working together, thinking together, discussing, you know, the prompt and the work um, and uh, writing, you know, their section, their assigned part of or their paragraph. And then they work together to uh, to build um, a, a response, an essay response. And I, I, I found that I could give better faster feedback to the students. Uh, the students enjoyed it more. And frankly, they just learned more because they were learning together instead of being isolated in their own often dislike of writing, so. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I mean, the dislike is real. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's when they have a, a mission and they're, they're together, hopefully they work well together. I've definitely seen them push each other. Um, and into the learning task. And that's been great. And it's great to do that with docs and slides really. Um, but yes, check out these templates, see how they can be useful for you. Um, as a side note, I always, if I have to write a lesson plan, a formal lesson plan, do it on Google Docs. If I'm out one day, things change last minute, I'm able to add a quick note or a quick link to Google Docs. And my sub is able to have directions updated in real time, which has been awesome. So I see some questions in the chat about um, how do we make a template for duplicating? Okay, so I do wanna touch on that because that's another key feature. So let's talk about filing and make a copy. File, make a copy. So anything you see that's blue and underlined on this document, there's an article, there's a video or something to walk you through step-by-step step how to do that step. So when you want to duplicate something like, let's say our KWL chart, all right? So if you wanted to take this and make it your own, first of all, I highly recommend if you have a template that you like, oh, I could use this for my classroom, I just need to change the text, have a copy in your Google Drive. So file, make a copy, and then from there, you can tell Google where to store it in your Google Drive, your online hard drive, which we'll touch on shortly, okay? So I like to title mine, let's say, let's say I erased all your answers here. I'm ready to use this for my own classroom. I'm making my changes, I made my changes, great. I wanna save this for later use. I like to save it as a template. So, okay, this is a KWL graphic organizer and I label it, I just label it template. And you can actually save it as an official template, um, but I find it's just easier to save it this way. So just like that, it's going to be saved to my Google Drive. Now this is my copy. Nobody else has access to it unless I give them access following those share steps that we talked about earlier. So I'm not gonna go through how to share again, but it's loading all of your beautiful answers. And then from there, you can see right now it's restricted. It's only in my Google Drive, only accessible to me. So if you find something that you like online, I highly recommend file, make a copy, save it to your own Google Drive, all right? And then let's see, for commenting, this is a one of the best features of Google Docs in my opinion. When you're looking at student work, you can highlight their statements and give them feedback based on a sentence, a paragraph. Um, you could show them spotlight exactly what you want to uh, comment on. So I do that by highlighting a statement and going ahead and adding a comment. I'm pressing this button right here, add comment. So from there, I can go ahead and type my feedback and they can have it to use as they see fit. Once they make their changes or once they see your comment, they're able to click this check mark to say, hey, Ms. Hickman, I resolved that comment, I solved the problem. Or yes, Ms. Hickman, I read it, I got it. I'll receive an email letting me know that they have taken my feedback. Okay, some other features, voice typing. Whenever you get tired of typing on your own, you can talk to your computer much like you can with Microsoft Word and have, um, have Google do the typing for you. You can do that by using your shortcuts, if you know your shortcuts or you can do voice typing in the help section here. I like to use the help section probably a little too reliably. And from there, it will start typing exactly what I am saying. I find it extremely useful whenever I, my fingers just can't work the keyboard anymore. 
And the dictation is pretty powerful and pretty accurate, except for petition, I didn't say that. <laughs> but overall, I find it's one of the best uh, word processing dictation apps online. I'm really impressed by it. Um, so two other features I wanna share with you before I turn the spotlight over, um, embedding a Google Doc into your slides in my classroom, I found it was really useful to be able to quickly direct students to a complementing slide deck, another online resource. In order to do that, I thought it was awesome to be able to embed a slide into a doc. So how do we do that? Um, let's switch tabs here. So let's just say I wanted this uh, about me doc, uh, this about me slide, excuse me, inside of my uh, Google Google Docs, um, excuse me, my Google Docs uh, tab here. Sorry about that, going back. So I'm gonna go ahead from this thumbnail section. You can do this with any Google Slides deck. Go to copy, switch tabs. From there, you can just paste. And this is a feature I really wasn't aware of. So I use my keyboard shortcuts to copy and paste. Now I can link this to my original Google Slides presentation. So now I've added a Google Slide into my Google Docs. It's really great if you want something visually dynamic or you want students to be pointed to another complementing resource. So I see here that I can click this link and open the source. I can jump straight to that slide presentation. Another useful feature that I think is a little underutilized. Let's see. Okay, at this point, I wanna pause, make sure there's some questions in the chat. Does voice command apply punctuation? Not very well, not very well. So I would recommend going back and of course, reading what it typed just to make sure it's, it's pretty close actually, but it still needs help with punctuation. You could still tell it comma, period, but I find a lot of trouble when I'm telling it period six and I actually mean class period. Sometimes it's better to type those things. Yes, that's true. All right, so let's see, let's see. So another uh, feature here, the explore tab, which, um, okay, now I see it. This is this icon you might see in the bottom section of a Google doc. So when I click explore, a lot of people don't know that you can surf the web within your Google Doc, all right? So what that might look like is I click Explore. Let's say I want a Google Docs tutorial. And it's saying to me like, hey, you have some stuff in your Google Drive that matches that description. Is this what you wanted? Uh, or it goes to the web like, oh, do you just want a resource for that? Because I could give that to you. I could look at images that match my description as well. So one thing I like is that I'm able to cite whatever resource I use here. If I want to cite this resource in APA format, I'm able to do that. Always check your, your generated citations, right? They're not always the most accurate, but at least I have a footnote and it's quickly there accessible. I check my citations to make sure they're correct. A lot of people don't know. It's a quick way to track resources in a document with a lot of information like this, okay? There's also uh, an ability to publish your web page, your a Google Doc to the web, make it an online page. So forget the trouble of making a website yourself. You can go ahead and file and publish to web. And I could turn this page into an online web page of its own. So no more sharing issues if it's the way you want it and it's something you're gonna turn back to very frequently, I recommend publishing it to the web, publishing it to Canvas, Schoology, Google Classroom. So another cool feature there, not to mention it updates every time you update your original Google Doc. So that's a really cool advantage when it comes to publishing to the web. All right, so I, I've talked a lot. Um, so I want to leave you with some examples, of things that I've done in the past to use Google Docs in my classroom. So as you know, I'm social science. This is a class brainstorming document. So each student or each um, students were paired in groups and they all had a topic to explore. So in Google Docs, I had students pull text-based resources online and multimedia resources 
songs, photos, uh, video clips, etc. And they had to basically make a brainstorming document. And as a teacher, it was really cool to be able to see all of their thoughts, um, their progress, what resources are they pulling? Are they using history.com over and over and over and over again? Because we want some primary sources in there, right? Um, I loved being able to see their progress. I loved being able to drop in and check on groups that were, that were having a, a blank session or only two resources. I thought this was really cool and it's been a useful a template for me in Google Docs. Highly recommend it to uh, file, make a copy, adjust it for your subject matter. Great for working in small groups. So at this point, I'm gonna let you guys explore the rest on your own. If you feel like you're ready to use Google Docs, um, just think about what is your learning objective and is Google Docs the best tool to achieve that objective? Uh, is there a Google Docs template for what you're trying to do? Because chances are there is. Um, between uh, Twitter resources, Teachers Pay Teachers, there's a lot out there, but I highly recommend just asking your colleagues what they're already doing if they're well averse when it comes to Docs. So let's go ahead and save this to our Google Drive. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this link one more time for you guys. Let's go ahead and save this to our Google Drive here. All right, so we're gonna do um, file, make a copy once you're in this document. And then from there, you wanna title it and put it into your Google Drive. Getting started with docs. I'm gonna put it in my drive. Let's see, I think I'm gonna put it in this Google Camp folder. Great. All right, so I'm gonna turn it over to, um, I actually took up a lot of the time here. I get really excited about these features, but I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Hickman to uh, finish us off to help us with some drive tips. Okay, well, thank you, Amber. Um, again, I'm getting weepy here, um, but uh, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, talk about Google Drive and I'll try to maintain my composure just really quickly. There's not a lot of time left, but um, again, if you, if you look at Google Drive as kind of the hub for all of the other Google tools, it really does uh, tie into all of them. And of course, again, it's, that's, this is the point where you can share, we can see it, the edit history of a document. And so I wanna quickly kind of just go through, well, how do I get there? How do I get to my Google Drive? Well, there, there are a couple of ways. Well, if you notice up here, you have this, um, we call it the waffle, the app launcher. Uh, you can click on that, that'll bring up this menu here and you can find the drive icon. Keep in, keep in mind that these icons are, um, drag and drop. You can arrange them any kind of way that you want. So the things that you use more frequently, you can move up to the top. Uh, the other things you can move around uh, down to the bottom. You can also go and in your, your browser address bar, just drive.google.com. And that works for all of the Google tools. You can go docs.google.com or, or slides.google.com. And that will take you right to uh, the, the uh, page. Okay. So when you look at the, um, the main sidebar in Google, uh, you have this new button right here. And I'll just kind of demo that from, from my actual um, Google Drive. When I click new, I have the opportunity to upload files or folders. I can start a new document and I can start that as blank or from template as Amber mentioned. I can also go down here and get more and I have uh, other Google apps as well as um, added um, Google compatible um, tools that I've also added there. So you can start those right from Google Drive. Okay. And when you look at uh, one feature that I, I really do like is this priority. And so priority really just helps you uh, organize your workspace. And so if you have an organizational account uh, generally, uh, you can go to your priority and if you notice here, like everything that I've been working on recently is, is listed across the top. I've created these workspaces for the things that I'm responsible for. So, and those documents that I just go to frequently, I just put them right into uh, their sorted workspace. So here I can get most of my work done from Google Drive just by going um, to my priority workspace. And if you click on this little 
button here, this uh, gear, and you go to settings, there is this feature right here, make priority my default homepage. And so this is what I use. So whenever I go to drive, I want it to land right here because typically this is where I'm going to get to work, okay? Uh, another quick feature while I'm here that I want to, 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 um, to highlight is if you are either converting from Microsoft Word to uh, Google or any of the Microsoft products, I really like this feature. It's convert uploaded uh, files to Google Docs editor format. So Google Docs can edit uh, Word, Word files in its native format, but you can also just have it automatically when you upload a Word file, just automatically convert that document to a Google Doc. And that, that's helpful uh, because you, you can't take advantage of all of the features of Google um, if you just have a native Word Doc. So those two things that I think you, should, you wanna take away from, from, this, um, from this settings is convert to Google Docs format. And this goes for PowerPoints will be converted to slides. Excel will be converted to, um, to sheets. And then again, this make priority my default homepage should you choose to use that feature. Okay. Okay. Uh, my drive, well, if, if you look at your Google Drive as, uh, as a, a file cabinet, well, this is the file cabinet right here. And so you can go in and you can organize that um, how you see fit. Um, couple, couple of just organization tips, those things that I go to frequently, I usually start it with a, a hashtag there or some symbol, and that'll put it at the top of the list. Or, or ordinarily, it'll be organized by uh, name, but you can definitely change that by with other features. Uh, you can right click and change uh, the color if you like. And um, if you notice here on the side, the activity, uh, with any of these uh, files or file folders, you can see the history of that, that file or file folder uh, right there in the activity, or if you have perhaps maybe a, a particular file here, I can look at the detail. Oops, didn't want to do that necessarily. Close that. I can look at the history of that uh, particular um, file, and so if you're if you're on a collaborative doc and maybe you have students working together, you can see who added what. Oh, I lost all my information. I can go in and see the history of that and see exactly who changed that document. So you have a, a greater degree of accountability. And of course, if you have a collaborative uh, doc, you can see, hey, you know, I, I see that this person, you can see each person's contribution in that doc. And you can also see this in, in Google Docs as well. Um, quick tips, because I know my time is getting away from me. I do want to um, mention shared with me. Okay, so everything that's shared with you, whether it's shared with you personally through your email, or if someone has a link that's open to everyone in the organization, well, guess what? You're gonna find it right here and shared with me. If you looked at your shared with me, you're gonna see docs that you did not even know existed because again, everyone, anyone can share with you, okay? Uh, if there's something that's important that you want to, to, to access frequently, it's a good idea just to right click on that and click add shortcut to drive. And that will place that uh, a link to that in my drive where you can uh, organize it a little better. Uh, the other thing you wanna keep in mind with uh, drive, I'm gonna go back to my drive is everything is drag and drop. So if I have a file and I wanna file it, I can just file it in any of, of my file folders here. Let's say I wanted to file that in my RCOE, I can just drag and drop it. And um, there you go, I moved it. Now, final tip because it's uh, important and my, my time is running out. Now, if you notice here, some of these file folders have a little person icon inside of them and, uh, and others don't. So in my Google Photos here, this is private. No one can, can, can see it. Uh, and this one from PC, well, there are some things in there that, that are shared, okay? Or this, this file folder is shared. So that means that everything in that file folder is also shared. So you wanna be mindful of that when you are, are sharing files or file folders, okay? Because um, you definitely don't want to share um, sensitive student information with an anyone link, 
okay? Because that means that anyone who has that link is able to, to click on it and see that sensitive student information. So if you do share, and sharing is much like any other uh, document, for example, here in this 5e instructional model, I can right click, click share. And just like in Word, I can identify the people that I want to share it with, or I can share it with a link and I can change it to um, anyone with the link or anyone within my organization or restricted. That means that only people that are added specifically can see that document, okay? Okay. And let's see, shared drives, we will talk about uh, starred files. If you have something that you're working on, um, like right now, you know you're gonna be going back to this frequently, you can put it in your starred files folder, right? And just, and all you do is just right click it. And in this case, if I wanted to take this out of my starred files, I can click remove from starred. And this, in order for it to be useful, requires some maintenance. You can't just put everything in starred, otherwise it just becomes, you know, just like your Google Drive. So uh, that's, that's important and, you, and that's a way to store it. Uh, trash lasts for 30 days and my last and final tip here, I'll do uh, the menus. We've talked a bit about this already. Okay. Make sure that you're in the right account in the up, upper corner. If you, have, if you have more than one Google account um, attached to your, to, your, to your computer, then make sure that you're in the right account. So you'll have your organizational account. And if you notice here, here's my organizational account, but I have several other Google accounts as well. And so if I want to switch, I can just click on that and switch to another account. And finally, the search feature, if you're not the best organized person, you can still use Google Drive to search and you have a myriad of options. You can type by file type, by the owner or the location, the date, item name. If, if there's a, a certain word in the document and that's all you have, you can type that in there and you, you're able to find uh, documents. If something's been assigned to you, you can do it here as well and, and find those documents. So even if you're not the best organized person, the search feature can be a lifesaver. So. Just a quick question. How do you add things to the priority tab? That was one question in the chat. Okay, uh, well, basically I just right click on it and then I add to workspace. And then the workspaces that I have set up, uh, will I can just add it to with a with a with two clicks. A right click and then identify the uh, workspace. Thank you for that. Thank you. And again, we talked about sharing files a bit. Uh, you want to make sure that you give the uh, proper permissions. If you want them to be able to edit, you want to make them an editor. If you simply want them to see it and make their own copy, you can make them a viewer. Or if you're looking for feedback on something, you can make them a commenter. Okay. And again, just as, as I conclude, important sharing reminders, you wanna make sure that you don't share personally identifiable information within any one link, okay? Because again, that is a, um, that just makes it accessible to anyone. Um, you can set ex, uh, sharing options to expire for individuals. So let's say your, your, your district allows you to uh, use Google to share uh, IEPs. Well, you know, a teacher doesn't need an IEP forever. So you can set a time limit on how long they can have that and set that link to expire. And if you are a person who distributes a lot of, uh, of uh, documents and maybe you're, you're not using Google Classroom, uh, you can just set up a file folder with view privileges and then uh, others can go in and make their own copies of that document. So you kind of have a master file of all of your docs, okay? So my time has expired, but I do wanna say if you, you need more um, help with Google Drive, and this was certainly a very fast uh, overview, uh, you can go to the Google Training Center where they can answer just about every question that you, you might have. And also we have another session called uh, Drive Faster, 
which uh, should be a, a little uh, slower and dealing only with uh, Google Drive. And that's at 11.30 today and tomorrow. And I think both of those uh, should prove to be very helpful for you. Okay. And so Absolutely. that's all we have. I think our time has expired, but uh, we yeah. really appreciate you coming and, and joining us in this uh, session. And we hope it's a, at least a great start for you to start using Google uh, Docs and Google Drive effectively. And I'll leave the final word to Amber. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. This was a crash course. This was a fire hose to the throat. I understand that. But please uh, tweet me. I left my Twitter in the chat. And any quick questions that I didn't get to in the chat, I would love to help you out, especially with docs. But you got to hit up uh, Dr. Stephen Hickman for, for the drive expert expertise here. <laughs> thank you. <guys. laughs> all right. You all take care and have a great uh, Google account. Bye-bye. Thank you.